This martial arts class, this live martial arts class, you'll discover the best martial art for street fight, self-defense, weapon, in this case, the Kali stick, or also known as the Screma, our knee stick, but we're gonna call it Kali for the purpose of this workout. You can call it whatever you want, it doesn't really matter. And if you look at it, the length is about as long, if you're looking for the proper length, from the tip of my finger there to my armpit. It can be a little longer, a little shorter, so if you don't have Kali sticks, you can buy a pair, I'll put the link, if you have Amazon Prime free shipping, you can get a, a pair shipped to you from Amazon or any other martial arts supply store or make your own. I made my own weapon, everything I made, first time uh, before I bought one. And that's a good test to see if you're really gonna do it, if you're really gonna use it. Before you spend the money, it's like if you're gonna join the gym. Now's a good time when you're stuck inside. Don't join a gym if you're not doing push-ups and sit-ups, jumping jacks, running in place every day. You need a routine of working out, then invest in working out. You need a routine of fighting with sticks, and then invest in the best sticks you can get but start with some you make from an old broomstick. Cut them in half. This is your warm up. This is going to keep you safe from injury during this workout. Just swinging back and forth. And notice when I do that, my elbow is bent. As I warm up, I'm going to start to straighten that elbow. That'll create more leverage and put more pressure on those shoulders. Not in a bad way, in a good way to stretch them out, to build speed and power. And now I want you to separate those motions. We're gonna warm everything up properly, stay safe from injury before we start hitting hard. And you can use a bag, or you can use a stack of tires, you can use a pole, you can use a tree if you're outside. Anything to strike with. And you don't have to have something to strike with at the beginning. You can do it all in the air. The key is to start. You wanna learn how to defend yourself? Get started. Hello, it's good to see you again. Thank you for coming back. All right, now you've warmed up the shoulders, a little bit of the, the elbows. Let's do the wrists. From here, with your elbows in tight, you're gonna push your stick forward, letting it drop and come back around. When you do that, the palm goes face up to the ceiling. You do both hands at once. When your elbows are in, you'll have more movement, more range of move movement, because you are allowing those joints and those tendons to stretch. If your arms are out, they're not going to go around as fast. So start here and then reverse it. Now, the nice thing, the thing I like the most about using these for street fight self-defense weapon is they don't necessarily, it's not a knife, it's not a gun, it gives you a lot of options. It's still lethal, you can still kill somebody with these. And it's better than just an open hand. Somebody has a knife coming at you, What's the truth and the reality of a knife? You're gonna get cut. You might lose your life. A lot of, if you ask a lot of police officers, they'll tell you. This is something we all talked about. Rather be shot than stabbed. Uh, depending, right? <laughs> In some cases, it won't matter either one. If you're dead, you're dead. But people get stabbed with those knives. They slice everything up in there and the doctor's gotta try to get in there and sew it all together, all those organs and stuff. Gunshot wound goes in the shoulder, goes out. It's harder to recover from a knife. So they have a knife, you've got a big stick. You have length, you have leverage, you have power. The nice thing about these weapons, collie sticks, is the length of them. It gives you protection. It's about the same length as that bow staff coming out of my hand when I put them together. All right, so you're doing this twisting motion, twirling. Your hand has to stay closed. You'll see this, this is wrong. People who uh, do that generally have a different experience with weapons. Good, welcome. You always have to supplement, you know, once you get the third Dante window, right? Or any style, you know pretty much everything there is to know. There's no secret uh, technique. You know, more, more pumse, right? More forms. And then it's just a matter of putting it all together. Experience and fighting. Keep that hand closed and fight for that speed. So that's a good time. Third Don, Taekwondo. First Don, it's like graduating high school. Second Don, you start to like go back to, go back to this motion. You start to figure out what you want to um, major in, right? Is it gonna be fighting? Is it gonna be forms? Is it gonna be weapons? Is it gonna be breaking? 
Chupak. I love breaking. All right, now put them on your shoulder. I want you to spin one and drop it. Spin it and bring it back. Spin one, drop it, spin it and bring it back. There are a lot of different ways. Maybe it's the philosophy, the meditation aspect of martial arts that you want to focus on. Second down, you still have to learn whatever the requirements are for your style and your school. But then third down, fourth down, fifth down, you start to get into mastery of the basics. People hear that term martial arts master. That doesn't mean you're enlightened and you can walk on water or you're above anybody else. It just means you've mastered moves or basics or ideas. So you go one, I have to read that in a minute. Two, on the phone it disappears almost like 10 seconds, not even that, after you put it up. But once you get into the black belt levels, then you get to choose what do you really want to focus on. And maybe you're thinking, I, I'm really good at Taekwondo. Or at least that good or as good as most people. You're gonna bring it here, bring it out, bring it here. Maybe you really want to get deep into fighting, try to go to the Olympics. It's still in the Olympics for now. I keep changing it. It's not the kind of fighting that I used to do, but it's still a sport in the Olympics. Maybe you want to go more into the Hoshin Sul, as they say in Korean, the uh, self-defense aspect. Maybe you say, okay, I want to do, that's a good age. I'll be 53 in a couple years, four years to be exact. The guy I just got off the uh, portal with, I work with this guy virtually. His name is Bo. He started when he was 68, He's almost 69. He's 71 or 72 now. 53 is a good starting point. You're going to you're going to turn you're going to be older next year anyway. You might as well learn something between now and then. But what I was saying is once you learn one style of martial art, either get better at that or supplement it. Maybe you need to learn how to wrestle if you don't know how to or do some jitsu, some jiu-jitsu. All right. Now, from your shoulder, we're talking about street fight self-defense. Just like everything else, situational awareness principles over techniques. You have to learn the principles of self-defense, fighting on the street, staying safe so you can go home safe. Number one, pay attention to what's coming around you. Number two, that includes whether they have a knife or not, right? Number two, get in a better position. Get yourself behind your fighting sticks. See that angle? You want that angle. From here, I can strike, I can move you back, I can hit you high, I can hit you low, right? You can hit on this side, and I've got two. That's the uh, thing I love about this. You can fight with one collie stick, use the other hand, maybe you've got a knife in the other hand, or maybe, you have an open hand and you're, you're hitting with this one and then you're stripping and pulling their weapon out with your other hand. I forgot to mention this. Make sure you have a little bit of that stick coming out of the small side of your hand. That's so you can jab that right into their body, right? That's so when you hit them here and then you stick that right in their face. You have to have a little bit there or maybe it's to peel their weapon out, popping their hand off their weapon once you trap them because there's a lot of trapping involved in this style of martial arts, Filipino martial art. So maybe you're trapping. Um, you can also block or deflect with that part. And of course, that's a smaller strike. So make sure there's a little there. Don't be on the very bottom. It's also a better chance of losing them. Choke up a little bit. All right, let's talk about strikes. So from here, I have a strike that's coming through your temple to your cheek, right at this angle. And like all weapons, I wanna fight. This is a principle. Not a technique, a principle. The idea is I want to fight from behind my weapon. I want to get it in my center line. That's very important. If you start doing partner drills like Sinawali and you're running sticks, as they say, your sticks are hitting the other sticks, people will tend to try to hit stick to stick. Never try to hit their stick. Always go through the middle of their body. If they're doing it right and you're doing it right, your sticks will hit. But the purpose is not to hit sticks to sticks. You'll see these guys. And they're hitting sticks and they're doing sticks really well. It's not about hitting the stick. It's about doing the technique properly. And if you're do both doing it right, your sticks will collide. They'll run into each other. Also, maintain a nice arcing motion, slicing motion. You want it to be round. You want it to come through and not just down. Coming down like this, you hit it the wrong way. Your stick breaks in half breaks, and you only have half a stick. Now, Marion, you can use all these strikes that we're doing with the collie sticks with your cane, once you've got that cane. So make sure you're practicing this. If you don't have collie sticks, use your cane. All right, so we're here. 
I want to put them on your shoulders. I want you to get your elbow in. I want you to practice one strike and then one strike. So this comes from this right hand, right shoulder. Put on the left hand. One, two. Just this first X, creating that X, right? And see how wide that X is? I want you to get it super tight. See how it's hard to see my eyes? Make it hard for them to see your face. Put this between you and them. One, two. Street fight self-defense weapon, this best martial art, collie sticks, or how to fight with collie sticks, is what we're talking about, right? It becomes the best martial art because it's the one you can practice right now, and it's also practical. You can carry these with you wherever you go, but see this basic motion? That's where you start. You've warmed up, you did your twirling and your spinning, now you're doing striking. And not very fast at the beginning, I want you to really pay attention to this nice, tight X. Do some with the uh, right hand and put that left foot in the front. With your left hand, same thing. Slicing through the middle and bringing it up. And I want you to watch yourself. Use a mirror or do like I'm doing. Put your phone on and watch what you're doing because I want you to get it super tight, really tight. Another thing you can do is take a piece of tape, two pieces of tape, and make a tight X on a bag, on the wall, on the mirror, and as you go through, not touching it, you're not gonna touch it, but follow that tight X, and that'll help you train your mind and your eyes to see when the stick is right in front of your face, in front of your face. So we're left hand, and then back to the right, I want you to go with the first X down, and then turn your palm up and bring it up the other way. So you've got down and up, one, two, three, four, and then switch. One, two, three, four, switch. Now, as you switch, I want you to think about foot placement. Not too much though. Don't think about it too much. Just think about how bringing your foot forward turns your body and makes you a smaller target. See how wide I am? I'm generally a wide person. All my organs are here, all my vital spots. When you think of your, to yourself, all right, I need to defend myself, situational awareness. Weapon, between me and you, create some distance, get in a better position. When you think of the third thing, which is what are the targets? What are the targets of my opponent that I'm gonna now, as hard and as fast as I can, strike with my collie stick? Eyes, nose, temple, jaw, throat. All the nerves in the neck, and the veins, and the, uh, where the blood flows, right? And then, uh, not as, as vital, but the nerves in the arm, maybe the elbow, the ribs, break the ribs so they can't catch their breath. The blood fills up and then you get away. Street fight, self-defense for self-defense. Those are your targets. Maybe you go lower. You're gonna hit them in the, um, uh, the organs down here, right under the ribs. Or you're gonna go for their guts. You know, that, that thin, um, layer of muscle, that fascia that covers their innards, their uh, intestines. You know, hit them there and pop that open, making a hernia. They can't chase you, they can't run. Maybe their knees, you're gonna crush their knees. Those are all your targets you think about. Then turn it around and think about, okay, what are your targets, what are my targets? And then I wanna get, I wanna, I wanna fight in a way that you're not gonna get in and strike my vital spots that's why I want you to be so tight with these X's, right? And when you take that step, making your body smaller, you now put your hard bony parts, your arm, your hand, uh, your elbow, your stick between you and your vital spots, between the bad guy and your vital spots. So from here, think about that, taking that step, one, two, three, four, and then take the step and turn your body, one, two, three, four, take the step, and go a little quicker, start to increase the speed of these strikes until you're splitting the wind. And you can hear that, right? Then add one that comes through the middle. One, two, one, two, switching feet. One, two, one, two. And if you have a target, start to put that on the target and work on increasing power, devastation, self-defense, street fight self-defense. You're minding your business, you're trying to be safe. 
I showed you in a video last week. I'm wearing my backpack, my get home bag. I look like one of the Ninja Turtles now, right? Which one is it? I don't remember, which is the guy with the two swords? But you have them in your backpack. You're walking home, minding your own business, trying to get from one place to the next, take care of family. Maybe you're delivering meals to your loved ones who are shut in during this crisis. Someone comes out, two or three. It's usually two or three or four, right? Not always, sometimes it's just one guy with a knife. Sometimes it's two or three cowardly thugs through their numbers. They're intimidating people, taking stuff that doesn't belong to them. They want what you've got. But first, you're gonna give them some of this, one in each hand, and you're like, hey, right? International uh, symbol of stop, stay back. Don't come any closer, I'll defend myself. Get away from me. You can hit five, six guys this way, easily. How do you fight more than one person? A pair of collie sticks. How do you uh, street fight? How do you fight a bigger opponent? Force multiplier, right? And I'm not advocating fighting for pleasure or for fun or to be some kind of jerk bully, whatever. I'm saying to defend your life. You have every right to defend your own life. Carrying these, that gives you more options than just this. He's got a knife, you've got these. You make a mistake, they're gone, right? Your fingers are gone, that happens. You've, he's got a knife, you've got one of these. Look how much distance I can put between that knife and my vital spots. Look how much distance you can put between that uh, bad guy, that curmudgeon, and your vital spots. And then, how powerful that is. Maybe he's reaching in. That's where you've practiced these strikes. Now I wanna show you two more. One, bigger than you, she say back off or I'll get naked. Uh, uh, Patrick, I understand your sense of humor. I'm gonna keep it real though, brother. Um, you do you, I'll do me. So I'll say he's bigger than you. You just say stop. I have every right to defend myself and I'll do it. You don't even have to say all that. You just say stop loud enough, put your hands up, stop man, he's coming at you. Somebody looks over to see what's happening. You defend yourself. You have a witness that you were trying to defend yourself. All you had were sticks. He happened to have a gun or a knife or whatever. Or there are three or four of them. What other choice did you have? You were not looking for a fight, but you were smart enough to prepare to defend yourself. You put them in your backpack. You're walking home. You're going somewhere. You got to do what you got to do. You have to get out and get some food for your house or go get some medicine or, or, or go uh, help somebody. Maybe you're a first responder. You're a, a medical person. And you're still helping people. You're walking to a place, uh, the clinic or the hospital or someone's house to try to give them some help, some first aid, trying to save their life. And somebody else is going to try to take yours. It's ridiculous. But that's what's happening. That can happen. All of a sudden, you've got your sticks. So that's your workout. I want you to start here with your warm up. And then I want you to split that. This will increase your range of motion and the speed of your strikes because you're now getting stronger in your shoulders and it's forcing you to engage the core to improve your posture. You're getting taller now too and, and breathing. It's gonna get your heart rate up a little bit. And then start to do your twirling motion. Get those wrists. Remember your elbows are close together and you're doing both hands at the same time and you can reverse them. You can also, once you start to do this for a while, you can alternate them and you can bring them back that way. And then I want you to put that together, spinning down and spinning up. And then I want you to do one hand and then the other hand. This is all your warm up. And again, if you need a pair of sticks like these or you need something to strike, I always put the links in the description below and I'll put them in the comment section. And they'll ship it to your house. Down and up, down. You're gonna ask me that anyway. I get that question about five times a day. Where can I get this? Where can I get that? I'm putting them in the description to try to help you out. Then, doing one down, and you're going to start to alternate those. And you can do those up and down here, or you can do them from your shoulder out, like in the striking motion. And then from here, doing those at the same time. Just caught my ear. It's a good reminder. Pay attention. Don't be afraid to hit yourself. Allow yourself to grow that way. Isolate alone. Short cane stick, three foot long. Practice single stick. You just do one hand at a time. 
I like single stick, I prefer single stick. Double stick is very popular because of something called Cinewally, which is what you're gonna finish with. But I like to get one stick out of the way and just wham, wham, go to town, practice striking with that single stick. That's another strike, by the way. This one, just straight down. When you do come up at those angles, always turn your palm up. If you're here, yeah, I've got drumstick. I teach drumming, by the way. I know, that's crazy, right? Um, but not the, not, no offense, not the hippie Native American drum circle drumming. I did that for a couple years. Never go back. No offense if that's your thing. Um, I teach the taiko version, the Japanese, big drums, because it uses all the same stances as traditional karate. But I, I get people started with uh, those balls, the balance balls, the air in them, big ones, and a five gallon drum, like a paint drum. You sit on the thing, you practice, you flip it over, and then you're hitting that ball and stances, and I use regular drumsticks. Guess what we do with the drumsticks while we're practicing? Sinawali, on the ball. And then we practice with each other in the air with drumsticks the same way we would with collie sticks. So yes, drumsticks, perfect. Perfect thing, you use your drumsticks. Tap it, tap it, tap it, make some music, make some sounds, and then practice your basic strikes. And then if that's all you have, that's all you have. It's still better than having nothing against the knife, right? Street fight self-defense, weapon, best martial art. That's what we're talking about. It's the best martial art, street fight self-defense, weapon edition, maybe it's a drumstick. All right, last one, starting here. The right one is on your right shoulder. The left one is on your right ribs. See this? You're gonna get stuck here at some point, thinking that you're here, and it's not gonna make any sense. Always come back here, fingertip, armpit. 36 inches, 38 inches, 40 inches, uh, 32 inches, 28 inches. It doesn't really matter. About here, I like a longer collie stick. That's just me. But if yours isn't as long, that's all right. But that's just a general guide, right? Think about the length of your arm. But if it's not that long, still use it. Don't wait to get started until you have the perfect stuff. Start right where you are right now. All right, right collie stick, right foot forward. Chamber on the shoulder. Chambered means just like a, a, a bullet in a gun. Chambered, ready to go. Left collie stick, right ribs across the body, elbows tight. Awesome. Get started. Don't wait to start. Good for you. Strike, and then bring it back. Now look what's happening. I'm making a V. There's this strike, which is like a follow-through strike, and then there's this strike, where I hit and come back, like a ticking, like bam, like quick out, quick back. I want you to bring it out and bring it back to the other side. Remember I said you're gonna get here and you're gonna think you're here? That's probably what happened. But I want you to do it now. I want you to bring it over and back. Think of a V. That's gonna free this guy up. Strike there and bring it back. Now see how my sticks are parallel? They don't have to be perfect, but they're both on the left side now. Now the right one that started everything, this is number one, and then I'm chambered on the other side. And stay with me, because it'll make sense after I show you two more times. From here, you're starting to get it already, if you don't have it already. I'm tight, everything's on the right. V, out and back. Left hand, left side out and under and now i'm on the other side exactly like it did when it was over here do it one more time with me from here v out and back out and under then v out and back out and under and same exact thing so v out and back out and under now switch your feet because i'm going to hit with the left make myself smaller target v out and back out and under, V, two, three. It's three strikes. This is called Sinawali. Sinawali basically just means like a weaving, or this is a weaving pattern. And this is the most basic one, the heaven pattern. These are all the first and second strike. Remember one and two? Well, that's one, just not follow through one. And then that's two when I bring it back. One, or two when I bring it under. One, two, and I have one, and then this is two. This would be one, and that would be two on the other hand. There's two. 
That's two on the other side. Now I'm tight. That's one. And if it, it doesn't make sense when I'm saying one, two, one, two, don't worry about it. Just do what you see. Your brain will make all of the translations needed from here. And remember, the only thing you have to start adding here is that stepping. Right foot, left foot. Right, left. And then turn a little bit. Just practicing this basic Sinawali, this number one. Turning and then go low. But keep these sticks in front of you. You're fighting from behind your sticks. Yeah, if you want to put tape on the sticks to give yourself more grip, go for it. Or to cut down on blisters, there's nothing wrong with that. I, I don't know if you've noticed, I keep changing my hand position because there was a sticker here and that gooey, sticky stuff. I just don't like it. That's just me, though. Um, that's the only thing you have to worry about with tape. But if you keep your tape fresh, you know, you use uh, the right kind of tape for it, like tennis tape uh, or hockey tape or hockey sticks. You know, they make a tape for that. And then when it gets frayed or it starts popping off, you just replace it. Then, yes, you'll uh, be fine. You'll see a lot of tape. I've got sticks and sticks and sticks with tape all over them here. That's because rattan, when it starts hitting against another stick, will split. And when it splits, a lot of guys, they don't like it, like the sound. Like, listen, high pitched, that splits open, it's gonna go low pitched. And they just, you know, they just want a new pair of sticks. If you've got endless amounts of money and time, keep buying sticks. If not, that's where we put electrical tape. Just because electrical tape's a little bit stronger. And then you're hitting other tape. And then, you, and then you'll wear those out and then you put your tape there and then you turn them around and now you have a good side left. But then you're gonna split those open and then you tape it. And it, when, if you get into this, I probably had, I don't know, 100, 200 pair of collie sticks since I've started practicing with other people. They just get worn out. But um, you just keep, keep uh, taping them up for as long as you can and then always keep a pretty pair like this for making videos so people can see them. I've got two pair without any tape. The rest of them all have electrical tape all over them just because they split open. And they won't give you splinters because it's real fine, that rattan stuff, but it just doesn't feel good. Most people don't like it. I don't like it. So I get that tape on it. Uh, or I have another pair. I have these aluminum collie sticks, aluminum escrima from combative.com. You've seen those in some of my videos. Those are great because they're heavy, they're, uh, they're strong, and, uh, but you can't hit them against anything. You start hitting those against the other ones, all that aluminum is such a soft metal, that'll bend, ding, it'll look ugly. So uh, the best, those are great for demonstration. If you're gonna go to a competition and do some collie demonstration or something, I don't know. But these, you want something to fight with, you want something to carry, best street fight self-defense weapon, throw that in your bag, and you always have these with you. Um, I wouldn't put them in the car, uh, whatever, but you can, um, you know, you can if you want. If you do and the police officer stops you, what do you have a pair of sticks? Hey, I'm going to martial arts class or I'm going home to practice at home and these are my sticks. I've got to put them there. You should be fine. All right, let's go back to this. This strike, that X, or that V and back. I'm going to show you two variations real quick. From here, this strike and back. Now take this second hand and instead of striking on number two, make a deflecting block, smacking it out of the way. My sticks here coming at me, that just knocks it out of the way. So you just simply turn your hand over. So you have one, and that comes, that's the same. That's a little different, and it finishes the same as before. That's the same. One, turn it over, and back. One, turn it over, one, turn it over. And then the next one, you're gonna go up, and then you're gonna go down and up, kind of like a wide V, right? So one, two, now you're striking the knee, three and under, one, knee, three, one. So now you know three Sinawali patterns. And if you wanna know, I'll show you one more before we quit here. And there are a million, as many as you can imagine. You can make up your own Sinawali patterns or you can Google it, YouTube it, you'll find lots of Sinawali. Again, it just means weaving. Now, up, down. So I strike here and I strike down to the knee. One and to the knee. Now this is this is angle two. That's angle one. Angle one, I brought it across and then to the knee. 
And then the bottom, the second hand, I'm going to bring it back here to the chambered position. And I'm going to go to the knee. One, two, three, four. So now we've created four strikes where all the other Sinawali patterns up till now were three. So this is one, two, three. One, two, three. Two, three. And then we did one, two, three. One, two, three. That's three. And then we did one, two, three. So you see where I mean three, right? And then we say one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Up, down. They call this high, low. Different schools have different names for it, by the way. So uh, there are a lot of similarities. Some schools prefer to fight with one stick. And it's just like everything else. It's the funniest thing in the world that um, people learn how to do these patterns and that's all they want to do. They just want to run patterns. You also <laughs> learn how to take the stick away from people. You also learn how to fight other people with the stick and trap that stick and take it away from them and then hit them with your stick. You also learn how to fight with a stick and a knife. Let me see, where is it? The trainer real quick. Hold on. Sorry about that, I didn't mean to disappear. But this is a trainer, this is an aluminum uh, dagger trainer, right? So now I'm fighting, slicing, bringing it through, uh, trap your, your, uh, your stick, I have two sticks, I trap your stick, throw it away, and then I come out, and then I'm fighting with that knife, that dagger, and switching hand position, it's been a while since I've done that, and then you're fighting with two, and then you take their knife out of their hand, take their other stick, and now you're doing uh, something they call hubad lubad. All this hand slappy slappy happy stuff. It's fun. I'm not, I'm not making fun too much. But you start using uh, open hand and then arm bars and joint locks and uh, twists and back fists to the face. It's a full martial art. It's not my, I'm not the expert at it though. I, I'm a, a very uh, experienced beginner. But that's what you're here for. You're here to learn best martial arts street fight self defense, beginning level. You gotta get started. Just doing something, throwing punches. Swinging sticks, swinging your cane, using your bow staff, striking, defending yourself, and then you move up, move up. So ask, ask me again. I missed it. All right, maybe you guys are talking to each other. I'm going to log off now. I got to get moving to the next thing. Thank you so much for watching, for commenting. Please give me some uh, comments in the comment section too, and then I will ask your questions down there. I'll see those for sure. I don't always see the chats. Uh, I try to go back and watch them. I just don't have as much time right now, but I try to respond to the ones in the comment section. Please check out the other things that are in there. If you're looking for some training gear, I will see you next time.